So I'm going to start reinforcing the ears. Uh, normally, see how hot that is. I was just welding on it. Normally, I kind of just go around here and wrap it up to the front. This time, I'm going to try and go a little bit more overkill. <clears throat> I had seen what I believe is a plate from Hoppo's. I'm uh, not exactly sure. I kind of just was browsing their site and seen some of the reinforcement plates I have. And it looks in this shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build my plate. goes around here. I'm going to try and tie it all the way down to the front. It's kind of a little thin piece right here. But I'm also going to build a piece that goes on this hole outside. Cut me out a hole. And tie all that together. And I might do one on the inside. i got to look and see. Uh, I haven't thought that far yet. But I think I can put one on the inside too. Just kind of give it as much structural integrity as I possibly can. I'm going to grind all this down, get it smooth, get it down to nice flat shiny metal. Uh, this is cast steel. It doesn't weld the greatest. Um, really in all honesty, probably the best thing to use would be like a nickel rod with a stick welder. I don't have one. Um, probably could call a buddy of mine. He could bring his brand new fancy Lincoln welder over here, but... I'm going to just make it. I've made them for years and years and years. Never had any problems. Uh, I did have a few cracks down here when I was doing this. And I just ground them out, weld it again. The trick I've learned to this, preheat it uh, with a torch. You don't have to get like red hot or nothing like that. Just get it pretty warm. Weld it. And then uh, throw a heating, or a, not a heating blanket. Throw a welding blanket over it. And uh, try and let it cool as slowly as possible. That's the best thing I've found pretty much for any kind of cast. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to start making some templates. You know, just out of regular cardboard. Lay it up on it. Trace around it. On this, I'm probably going to lay it around it. Hit the edges with a hammer. Make an imprint on the cardboard. That will give you really good lines. And cut it out and fit it. Make sure it's all good. So I got my cardboard all cut. My hammer method didn't really work out as well as it normally does on this, so I ended up just sharpening it. But I got it all cut, so I'm going to cut out a metal. And while it's still warm, I'm going to try and fold it the best that I can. And we'll see how it goes. So now that I got my metal cut out, and I was going to form it while it was hot, but I've been sitting around talking to everybody on a messenger. Uh, yeah, my metal's cold now. So I'm still going to form it the best I can, put it in the vise, and kind of round it most that I can. Once I start welding on it, it'll bend a lot easier, but uh, I'm going to try and get as much of the form as I can before I start welding on it, because I am going to preheat this uh, with a little torch just to get some heat in it. That way it'll suck in a weld a lot better. And other than that, I'm going to just keep on keeping on. All right, so I started bending it, and then I said, screw this, this is taking too long. So I'm going to just start welding it and beating it around, forming it and shaping it as I go. So I'm going to get me a torch, start preheating this, and basically start out the flat spot and work my way around. So I'll just bring it back when I'm done. It's going to be too much of a timely process trying to weld and film at the same time. I'm going to try and get this done as fast as I can use the heat to my advantage. So I'll just bring it back when I'm done with this piece. So I got it all welded up, and now i got my welding blanket on it. Trying to hold in as much heat as I can, let it cool slowly. And so now I'm just going to sit on Facebook and chat with people instead of cutting out my other template for that side. Yeah, I could be doing other stuff, I guess. So I went ahead and welded up both ears. Turned out pretty good. This is just the tops. I'm going to go ahead and make another piece for there. I need to blow that off because I see all the fiberglass shimmying in the light. Yeah, I'm going to put a piece on this edge. I might do one over here too. I'm going to look and see how much of a pain it's going to be. But so far, so good. I'm happy the way it turned out. I managed to stay out of the bore for the bushing. So that's always good. Uh, when I go around with this plate here, I'm going to come around the outside of the edge. I would love to weld on the inside, but I really don't think there's going to be enough material to stay out of that bore. So I think I'm going to just weld it on the outside. I may make my hole a little bit bigger on the bottom and just weld around there just to kind of give it a little bit more structure you know the more you can get on this really the better so i'm gonna start building a template for that and i'll bring you back probably when the metal's cut so i got my template put in there i uh, cut my hole for my bushing a little oblong as you can see 
I want to leave as much meat up there at the top as I can because I'm not going to weld the inside on the top but I am going to weld it on the bottom so I pulled it away from the opening a little bit on the bottom so I ain't going to worry about my weld getting into the bushing hole but it should just be able to put two bends in it one folded back and the other folded the other way and I think it should go in there pretty easily we're about to find out so while my metal was hot I got it crudely bent into shape it still needs a little bit more forming, but I'm going to do that just like I do with everything else. I'm going to start welding it and tapping it into place. Got the outside of my ear beveled. Now it's got a good spot for penetration. I got my reinforcement piece beveled. Once again, good spot for penetration. Got that all cleaned up best I can. I put a burr on a uh, die grinder, ground it up, got it smooth, shiny. Got all the dimples taken out. I'm going to preheat it with the torch again and start burning it in. And after that, I'm probably going to weld this part last. I'm going to weld all the way around here, get it all formed in the way I want it. And then I'll probably hit that with the torch one more time, keep it warm, weld it in, throw a uh, welding blanket over it, and let it cool slowly. All right, got this side all welded up. It was a little bit of fun to try and fit it in there. And you can see, I got a little bit more beat marks than I usually do on it, but it was just a tight tight bend and a small bend. But basically I just started up here, welded my way across. You know, I pre-bent a little bit of it in the vise. I bent that and that. Just weren't extreme angles. But uh got it where it fit in there comfortably. Started welding around there. And I got in there and hit it with a hammer. It fit in pretty good. Uh, welded just a little bit down tap that in, weld it all the way down, come around, and then I start right there, work my way down, that way I can tap that in, run it around, tap that the rest of the way in, and then just burned it in from there. The good thing about the way I got the rear end reinforced is right now, that's pretty much about, you know, 90% all the mild steel, and then you got the 10% is going to the cast of the uh, differential so that thing is pretty well on there so we shouldn't have no problems with it breaking off or coming loose even if the piece in here you know did uh basically come undone from the cast metal which i haven't seen the signs of it yet usually if it's in the crack it'll crack and I haven't had no problem with it uh, like i said i've been covering it up with a heat blanket or i don't know why i keep saying heat blanket i've been covering it up with a welding blanket i let it get cool to the touch uh yesterday I welded these on, I welded both of them, and covered it up and just let it set overnight. I was pretty well done for the day. So, just let it cool on its own uh, today after welding this in. Probably let it sit, I'd say an hour, two hours, maybe a little bit longer than that. It's got a very, very little bit of heat, not really any at all. But uh, it's cool enough where I can handle it, obviously. So, I'm going to start making my template for the other side and get it cut out and get some metal and put it in. All right, so we're going to start on our back side now. Well, I guess it would be the front side because it's the pinion. Uh, I made a template. I don't know where it's at. This project has been the worst at keeping up with uh, templates. These are really good. Uh, when I did a partial on this Fleetwood, I actually used the templates from the Blue Rose. That was like six years ago. But I managed to hold on to them. They are in my toolbox the whole time. So, I made a template. Cut my template out. Made some metal. It fits in there pretty good. So I'm going to start burning it in. Uh, I had already run a torch over it to kind of preheat it. And you can see there's still some oil there. And if I haven't said it before, another thing about preheating is it kind of burns all the oils out. It gets all your contaminants out of the metal. That way, you know, when you're welding, it's not all spitting and spattering and making a mess. Um, so I'm going to hit this one more time. Hopefully get all that stuff out of it. Actually, I'm going to grind it all first. I'm going to cover my plug right there. I'm going to grind it. Get it clean. Blow it all out and hit it with some heat one more time and then burn this in just in case you're wondering this is how i'm bending it i'm just throwing a vise beat it with a hammer get some shapes and you can kind of form it the rest of the way and i get it close it's still warm right now i just cut it so i use the heat and keep it soft hit it with a hammer get it shaped up and i clean it all up and start welding it in and kind of form it from there and there's pretty much the finished product. 
wrapped on all sides. I did just a little bit of a bead in there. I don't want to get too crazy up in here. I want to leave most of the meat. Uh, it's kind of held in by the top, so that ain't really going to make a difference there. Uh, just put a little bit of a bead there. If I would have had a TIG, I would have went all the way around it because I could really control the puddle a lot better. But I don't have one of those here, so that's just going to have to do. And that's the other side. I'm going to just run over the grinder, smooth that up a little bit. I'm not going to buff them. I've buffed enough on the rear end. I'm tired of buffing. Uh, one thing, uh, keep in mind on this, I had to learn the hard way. If you have adjustable upper trailing arms, not all arms have the same depth, you know, the little throat depth. Uh, I had some, when you laid the car really low, they would hit right here. And it was just enough when you added the plate that it would hit the arm. So keep that in mind, you know, test fit it or kind of measure beforehand. Uh, it wasn't really something I'd ever thought of before until it became a problem. I had to grind that all down. It didn't defeat the purpose, but, you know, took a lot of material away. So, there we have it. So now you know how I wrap the ears on a rear end. Um, maybe overkill? Oh well. Uh, hopefully I'll never have a problem out of them. And you can also use this if you break the ear off of a rear end. Just clean up the broke edge real good. Put it back together just like a puzzle piece. Weld that part. You know, preheat it. Weld that part. Uh, I would try and weld the inside if you can. And get a die grinder in there. Clean it up, you know, best you can to be able to push that bushing back in. Is I mean, the more you can get of a weld, the better. Um, cover it up with a heating blanket. Cover it up with a welding blanket. Uh, let it sit and grind it all back down. Try and grind as least of your weld as you can. I mean, obviously you want a smooth, tight fit up, but the more weld you take away, the less strength you're going to have in that repair. But uh, clean it all up. You know, get all your casting smooth. Hit it with a torch, preheat it, kind of burn out any kind of grease. Um, you know, fit everything up, weld it, hit it, weld it, hit it, weld it, you know, get it just right. And when you're done burning in, wrap it up in a welding blanket, let it sit. You know, let it sit for the rest of the night if you can. That's the best thing I could suggest. You know, the slower it cools, the better it'll be, the stronger it'll be. So just take your time on it, and it'll turn out pretty good. Anyways, uh, I'm about to start getting some work done here. I got plenty to do myself. Now the rear end is done, I'm going to start throwing it back under the car. Still haven't decided what I'm going to do paint-wise, but it's going under the car and it's going to come back out again. So I'm not really worried about paint right now. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. But until then, hit the like button, subscribe, share, comment, all the good stuff. And I'll see you in the next go-around. Good shot. Got away free. It lives to die another day.